Hey guys, Desolator Magic back, and I thought it's time to make a very overdue video. I wanted to do this ever since all the spoilers were listed because I noticed the artwork in Shadows Over Innistrad is so unbelievably amazing. I love it, and there's subtle little clues in some of them, as well as some really funny details and really clever details and really awesome details. So I just wanted to do a breakdown of all the noteworthy artwork that's either my favorite or that I thought was just worth mentioning for some reason. Now before anything else, I should probably mention that a lot of these images that are uh, higher than normal quality and don't have a card wrapped around them are actually from the site artofmtg.com. You should definitely check that out because it's got a whole bunch of the art from MTG. First up, we've got Anguished Unmaking, where Soren totally takes out Avacyn, unfortunately. But did you notice on the far right, that is Tamio with Jace, in person. Very interesting. Almost as interesting as Apothecary Geist, where the guy's like, well, yeah, I died, but, you know, still gotta work retail. You know, still still got bills to pay. Next up, we've got Behold the Beyond. I just absolutely love this, because it's like, what is going on? What is the reference? When did this happen in the storyline? Now, I didn't read the last two parts of the story, so <laughs> I'm gonna get corrected a lot in the comment section, I'm sure, but um, this just makes me wonder, is this what happens when the moon slash, hopefully, Emrakul finally shows up, or... And, like, who is that? You know, you can't identify that as one of the Planeswalkers, so it just, like, really makes me wonder. Next up, we've got Brain in a Jar, obviously simply because it's a Brain in a Jar, and that's awesome. Next up, we've got Cathar's Companion, which uh, I just added because it totally reminded me of Boros Mastiff. And who doesn't love a cute puppy? Anyway, the next one, of course, is Compelling Deterrence. If you haven't seen this card, you're missing out, because this is just hilarious. That guy is freaking the hell out. And I would, too, if a four-armed zombie with, like, a hook, a scythe, an axe, and I don't even know what was chasing after me, I'd be up out of there. And then, of course, there's Declaration in Stone. I just like this one because, besides looking totally awesome, it shows the part from the storyline where all the vampires got totally, like, stone-nuked into the walls uh, by Nehiri, of course. And then, of course, there's Ethereal Guidance. I added this one because you just can't look at the card without thinking, Give me a hug! Next up, it's Explosive Apparatus. Uh, one, because who doesn't want a grenade in Magic the Gathering? I mean, come on, it's a grenade. And secondly, if you look really closely, there's people trapped inside the grenade. Or souls or something. I don't know, it's, just, it's cool. There's like some dude in there. He's like, what's up? Next up, there's Foreboding Runes. I added this one because, really, that, that torn apart crap hole can still tap for mana? Really? I mean, it's been through all that. It's been torn apart, and you can still get some mana out of it? Come on. And then, of course, there's the amazing Garrof's masterpiece. I love this one because Garrof's up in the balcony, and he's like, you can just tell, he's thinking to himself, does it need more blades, though? Because, I mean, I already thought it needs more blades, like six times it added more blades, but I think it needs more blades. Hey, did anybody else notice that it has a lot of blades? Then, of course, there's Haunted Cloak, which I added to this list because if you kind of squint and don't look too close, it really looks like a giant green ghost cat wearing like some weird sweater vest and that is just hilarious and awesome like the cloak is um i guess haunted by the spirit of a really like grumpy like or at least on way looking cat i don't know you know what's really weird is we pulled like five of that card i personally pulled 14 avicens okay so they did not print the correct amount of that card for some reason and then of course there's everybody's favorite jace's scrutiny I don't even know what to say about the expression on her face. It's it's like half like out of it, like slash like almost cross-eyed and just like weird. And then like her forehead's exploding. I guess if I had to sum up the expression on her face, it basically says, bro, bro, like get out of my head, bro. And then, of course, there's everybody's favorite artwork, Malevolent Whispers, um, because it's just so funny. He's, he's, he's literally sitting on his shoulder like the old, like, cartoons and stuff where there's, like, the angel and the demon. And he's just, like, whispering in his ear. He's like, dude, you should, you should totally attack, like, your, your allies and stuff. And honestly, that guy, like, he, he looks like the guy from The Shining, where, like, the best review that movie ever said, you know, oh, it's supposed to be, like, a guy slowly descending into madness, but that guy was halfway gone in the interview. He just looks crazy. He's just got a crazy look to him. And this guy's like Jim Carrey crazy. Now, there are some cards like Manic Scribe where as soon as you see them, you just think something. Like, you, you, you just, something pops into your head. Or at least if you're as crazy as I am. For this one, I saw it. And it's like, okay, he's got, you know, it's a Manic Scribe. Manic, of course, means like, like hyperactive, sort of. Um, then there's like 
all kinds of papers and like written documents like everywhere on the walls and stuff and then like he's writing like crazy and i just uh, the thing that pops into my head when i see it is oh my god i've got another idea for a fanfic this time we could do like a star wars harry potter crossover fanfic i have to write this and it's like three in the morning by the way if you would actually like to read my harry potter star wars fan fiction there's a link down in the description just kidding even i wouldn't sink that low then there's the just plain epic artwork for Olivia Mobilized for War. I love this one because it's just it just screams, you messed up my house, I'm going to mess up your face. Like, if she was an RPG character, that is the level 99 armor she's wearing. And look at that sword. It's like hollow and crap. That can't be good. Okay, so like, for comparison, this is Chill Olivia or Chillivia. And then this is Olivia Mobilized for War. Yeah, she's coming for you. Next up, we've got, of course, the amazing-looking Persistent Nightmare. I wish I had a foil of this. But besides a really cool, like, popping, uh, you know, eyes and color scheme and all that, first thing I think when I see this is, of course, I'm Weird Little Ghost Kid in a T-shirt, and this is Jackass. Watch, we're going to totally prank this chick with this knife. And then, of course, you knew this one was coming. It seems like there always has to be a low-cost, completely nutty green sorcery in every set. I mean, y'all remember Bear Punch. I mean, come on. I mean, everybody remembers Bear Punch, and then there was, like, another version of it where he's, like, uppercutting him, and then there's Rabid Bite. Um, he's biting a werewolf. I mean, if werewolf bites you, bite him back. I mean, that's that's what you do, apparently, in Innistrad. And then, of course, there's Reckless Scholar, and, um, well, I'm just gonna get right into narrating this one. You guys know where I'm going with this. Yes, I do see a second moon approaching with this telescope, and another thing. And who doesn't love Second Harvest, besides being a really good card... There's two of them, get it? There's two of them. There's two of each of them, get it? Because it clones them, get it? Plus, that totally looks like like Children of the Corn, except it's like old creepy dudes of the corn. That's probably a real thing. You probably shouldn't Google that. And who doesn't love the artwork for Shamble Back? The crow grabs his hair and tries to rip his head off. I mean, that's just funny as hell, but I'm looking at that weird wreath. Like, what's the story there? Like, what what's he doing with that? Was he, like, wearing it? Or, like, what's up with that? Now, Shard of Broken Glass, I actually added for a little bit different reason. Um, I got one foil version of this, and it is one of the top five foils I've ever seen. I mean, this is right up there with, like, the Eye of Ugin um, Expedition Land, which just glows like purple radiation. It's unreal. This card honestly really does look like glass. Every single one of the colors just pops. It's just one of the best-made foils ever. And then we're back to my normal level of seriousness with Sinister Concoction. Um, that dude, I mean, if I had to guess what's going on, he's not like, oh, I'm going to make a poison. Oh, cool. I'm going to look at the camera menacingly. Nah, nah. He's just like, dude, it's not even payday. I'm just going to take what's left in the fridge and try and make a soup out of it. And then like his roommate walks in. And he's like, it's not as bad as it looks. Like, I think it's edible. If you thought I was going to skip the other side of Persistent Nightmare, <laughs> nope, startled awake time. I just love this because it's just like, like, he just sneaks off and he's like, mom, 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 can I have a glass of water, mom, mom? And she's like, shut up, I got a headache. It's three in the morning. Go away. Go, like, check your Facebook or something, little bro. And next up, there's the amazing Survive the Night. I love this one because it just screams horror movie. I mean, you got him kind of coming in the door and then the arms and she's trying to close it. And then she's got a crossbow because she's like super hardcore awesome. And then she's like totally not in like Adidas track pants to run away from the zombies. She's in like the least advantageous outfit ever for running away from zombies. And then, you know, they boarded up the windows, but they're still coming through and it's all dramatic and it's called Survive the Night. And it, it just all flows. I love it. It's just such a horror movie scene. I love it. Next up, we've got, of course, Thing in the Ice. Now, I don't add cards to this list just because they're powerful. I add them because the artwork is cool. Now, you can kind of see an outline a little bit. It makes you wonder what's in there. But if you really look closely, the thing is absolutely gargantuan. And I guess it must be, like, floating, I guess, in the water. And then there's a really large ship pulling it into shore. <laughs> so they're kind of pulling it into the port, I guess. And um, that's probably not a good idea because look at the artwork when it flips. See, now it broke your ship all apart. You should have left it in the ocean instead of trying to tow it in and pawn it at the pawn shop. Then, of course, there's Thrabin Inspector. Once in a while, the artist absolutely nails it. And this one, I've got to hand it to them. They got the expression on her face absolutely flawless. That expression just screams, Oh, you guys, I don't get paid enough to deal with this crap. So gross. 
For the next one, in case you're not familiar with the wonderful world of dental insurance, um, let me just break it down like this, okay? Here is the dentist you normally go to and that you want to keep going to. And here's the in-network dentist that's covered by your insurance. Honestly, I would just pay the extra 50% out of pocket and go to the non-serial killer one. You know, when I look at the card Tormenting Voice, you know, some people would be like, oh my gosh, she's freaking out because the, the paintings are pointing at her out of the frame. Whoa, that's so cool. Now, I see um, something a little bit different. I think they're like, you stole the last cookie from the cookie jar. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I, just, I wasn't even there. And this would not be a proper list without me including Triskai Decaphobia. Now, why did it take so long to mention this one? Obviously, you haven't realized that it's in alphabetical order by now. I thought you would have, actually. Now, according to the number one source for accurate information, the Desolator Magic comment section. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. Um, there are 13 things that there are 13 of in here. So there's like 13 blood spatters and 13 like cooking things and 13 logs. So there's, there's 13 things that there's 13 of. Isn't that clever? Too bad the card's so damn small that you got to look at the full artwork to actually, you know, figure that out. And then, of course, there's the Twins of Maurer Estate. Um, I don't know about you guys, but they struck me as transvestites. I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, the dresses are a little overly girly, and that is a dude face right there. Okay, that is a bro face. The hair is a little much. It's it's a little drag queeny. The bow, I mean, come on. So you're getting chased not only by two creepy um girls. But you ain't even sure if they're girls. I mean, so that, that's like a whole nother layer to that right there. You know, and they're, they're kind of posed so like their their necks are in the shadow so you can't see that giant Adam's apple. That is classic tranny trick right there. You know, what's funny is I actually added this because I'm like, oh, cool. It's a reference to The Shining, you know, the two twins. And the, yeah. And then I saw the full artwork, like the full, full, full res. And I'm like, <laughs> trannies. Next up, we've got Unimpeded Trespasser, which you know, looks cool and all. It's like, oh, it's coming through your door because it's unblockable. That's cool. I added it just because it's a total throwback to one of my favorite cards, Phantom Warrior. In fact, it's sort of like an improved version of it. It's you know, a little bit souped up. But either way, they're coming through that door. You can put up all the doors you want. You're still getting hit. There are all kinds of reasons I added artwork to this list, but this one is a little bit different. For Vessel of Malignity, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but it is almost impossible to accurately and consistently print the color purple with a CMYK printer, which is pretty much every printer ever. I mean, there's pretty much no such thing as a red, green, blue printer. So to mix cyan, magenta, yellow, and black together um, and make purple, it's really hard to do, really, really hard to calibrate, but they actually did it, and the foil of this card looks absolutely insane. I actually have a collection of all purple foils, and this is one of the better looking ones. And if you didn't notice, there's an awful lot of purple artwork, actually, in Shadows Over Innistrad. So they tried a lot of dark blues and a lot of purples. Um, a lot of dark blues will turn out purple, and a lot of purples will turn out dark blue, just with a little tiny shift in the balance. So um, they really, really, really tried to get the artwork super accurate, super spot on with the color matching. Um, they must have probably used, like, a fiery controller or something really cool on the on the printer. I have no idea what printing technology they use, but I just think that that's really cool because um, you can tell with other cards they just got to a certain limit of blue and then just said we're not going to go past it because we don't want one card to turn out blue and one to turn out purple like wall of ice for example if you ever get the chance to see a wall of ice from all the different uh core sets yeah they're a little different like one's purple one cyan and one's blue it's just basically all they got printed so with that little blanket statement about the ink and the the artwork and what they tried to do in shadows overall um Hopefully you guys found this an interesting video. If you got some more favorite artwork from this or really any other set, um, your favorite artwork of all time, throw it down in the comments section so other people can look at it and admire it. And I'll see you guys next video.